Dinner in Hell Band. Dinner in Hell's Dynamo of a band. They're very dynamic. That's for certain. This freaking audience is dynamic. It's like they're in my right ear. They're in my left headphone. They're in my right left. Oh, it's like they're stereo freaking dynamic. They're cheering like the hype man out there is telling them to. Welcome back for another exciting edition of the Dinner in Hell podcast, the show where two amateur historians talk about the atrocious underbelly of history. I am one of your co-hosts, Brad the Impaler, and with me, as always, Ron Maiden. The champagne of podcast co-hosts. Indeed. That's not, I didn't make that up. That was what sent to me anonymously by an admirer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I saw that. That was a good letter. From the heart. It was written on top of my last Tim Hortons cup and Tim Hortons marker. Mm-hmm. The that, white chalk or whatever. Holy shit, Mr. Impaler. We got ourselves another body modification episode. This is, in fact, the fourth in our body modification series. Volume four. Yep. On the SoundCloud file, it'll say VOL, mm-hmm. lowercase i, lowercase i, lower a case. It's so ridiculous looking. I'm it's like lowercase a, i v. Oh well, either way, it'll be lowercase i. And if for some reason I know you're typing i, it won't let you like do. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's got to be lowercase if you Roman numerals. Sorry, pal. I think you can do them uppercase. Oh, really? Think, yeah, I don't know if it makes a difference. No, I think I tried doing something one time on social media, and it made it forced me to do lowercase. I was like, "God damn it!" Aesthetically, <clears throat> but uh, man, I can't believe volume four. So, what is that? What did we start with? First body modification modification was head skull binding. Uh, yeah, the uh, the the cranial baby cranial deformation. Oh, folks, if you're just now discovering our show, we uh, have discovered cranial deform- deformation. That was where, a fun one. Where they would <laughs> take like like ace bandage, kind of like a cloth. Yeah. And, and, uh, or as a an board, infant, like a wooden board a lot of times. Well, they would wrap the head to the board, mm-hmm. like Native Americans and shit, like Aztecs would do it, jungle people, but like South American jungle. Um but no one died. And that was like our first episode where no one died. Mm-hmm. I remember us saying that. Um, yeah, there's only a slight danger of death in today's modification. So what was number two? Well, you don't want to, you don't want to do that, this. You don't want to break uh, in. Well, don't you want to break down the volumes? Was that uh, tattoos? No. Uh, uh, tattoos and piercings. Yeah. But was that volume two or was that volume three? We did. I'm having a hard lip time. discs and neck stretching. Yeah, that was, was the three. most recent one. That was three. Yeah, that yeah. was that was number three. So number two was tattoos and piercings. Oh man, this one also is a little similar to tattoos too. Co- collect them all. You're in a hurry. You're just ripping right to it. Collect them all. All the volumes. Oh yeah, we They're got through them. Seven inch volume. We're gonna have seven inch records made vinyl. And also, again, there's another trend that spans all four. These would not fit on a seven inch. <laughs> a single episode wouldn't fit on a whole LP. They're going to be on picture disc. Our early episodes, maybe we could put out a seven inch of like one of our first three episodes. Guys, we don't want to come off quirky, especially if you're a newcomer to the show. We don't want to be quirky, but you can find our series on 8-Track. And as a matter, no, red, on not eight plastic. tracks. We will, we, if we release our podcast on a physical media, it will only be on the best possible physical media by which to listen to music available to consumers, and that is the highest quality of tape cassette. A cassette tape? Yes, that's the best sound commercial sound quality you can get is on the best cassette tapes. Maxell Gold. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Someone's been doing some tape trading in his punk days. 
his metal days. It's the best sounding music you can get. The vinyl records don't touch it. CDs don't touch it. You guys came here for a freaking scarification. You're going to leave with audio duplication. Yeah. So if you ever want physical dinner and hell, you're going to get it on a, t- a series of tape cassettes. So for the rest of my contribute contributed time, I'm going to say everything to you for the rest of the show in rhyme deal for real so what are we going to talk about on today's show do the full description please well we're going to be talking about a little bit of teeth violation and uh, some skin scarification go on (laughs) i don't know i can't do it (laughs) i tried people that is definitely what we're going to be getting into tonight and let me say it's pretty dicey it's gonna be gripping if you're eating you might want to put it back on a tupperware put it back in the refrigerator something put it away do not eat or if you feel fine please continue that's fine by me Unless you're eating a whole row of Oreos and you have a little like rocks glass of milk, mm-hmm. you're dunking each one and then you just toss the milk out in the sink. Fuck that. That's for cows. <laughs> That's for baby cows, not for me. Yeah, I don't know. Milk for me is to weird. Drink. Milk is weird. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like fucking with it. Brad only drinks kangaroo milk from the zoo. Boom. Pers- highest quality. Personal details. You were there. You mentioned scarification, which will be the first in our tandem of topics today. You try to rhyme. I'll hit them with alliteration. And if they try to disagree, I mean, we're talking possible obliteration, <laughs> verbal obliteration. Scarification is the process of putting permanent markings on the skin, like tattoos but not with ink, with cutting. So they cut you, heals, get scars. Scars are in a cool design, theoretically. Patterns. Yeah. Oh, my God. When I was a kid, we had the National Geographic magazines. Mm -hmm. You know, they always say, like, oh, my God, boobs are showing. Tribal women. Ski slope. Well, not only that, but, like, they would show people with scarred up bodies and stuff. I remember as a kid going, what the hell? Yeah, like, what is going on (laughs) that leads to this situation? Holy shit. Yeah. Prove you're a man. Ugh. Yeah, spend 14 hours or whatever getting this thing hammered into your back. Pattern. Some places, like certain different areas, would um, would do corporate sponsors. (laughs) Kind of like a NASCAR jacket. Oh, nice. It's cool. Like, Like, I saw one time. Mountain Dew. It was like in Kenya. There's this tribe. They were drinking like fresh blood from a pig. Guys, robe moved, and it was like M and M's, the candy, all scarred in his torso, like under his ribs. I was like, "Holy shit!" That's that was some nice shit. detail. M and M's must have paid a ton for you to let him do that. Now, also, the continuing trend from our previous episodes. A uh, tooth sharpening, maybe just a little bit more, but scarification's really, it's not that fucked up. It would be like horrible to go through, especially if you didn't want to. And to be honest, in a lot of situations, it's based on group membership. So a lot of people got scarified that probably wouldn't have chosen to otherwise. Well, what about but it's, I mean, it's. I mean, people, it's very important culturally to wide groups of people. Then how do you explain eyeball scarification? I'm not not aware of that. (laughs) Well, I'm just saying. That'd be, if it were to happen. Look, I've said this before. We've not only grown desensitized to this awful shit that we talk about, Mm -hmm. but we create worse. (laughs) Yeah. Like, oh, you got to freaking use boiling water, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm thinking like scarification eyeball, eight eyeballs, mom. Oh, I thought you were like about to drop some shit on me. I didn't read about. No. Holy shit. 
Now, the other thing we're getting into, human tooth sharpening. That is exactly, that's just what it is. It's the front teeth generally filed down into points. Oh, my God. So this is also a thing that happens in the world and has happened. I can only think of one reason to have that done is if you're, like, real serious about, like, Hot dog eating competitions. Or intimidation. Yeah, that too. Might like, freak me out. Like, let's say you show up to a hot dog com- eating competition. You want to intimidate your opponents. Like, mm-hmm. look, I'm going to be freaking plowing through these hot dogs. Look at these fangs of mine. It's like you're looking at a piranha's teeth. You'd have to really be careful on the sweets, though, because, like, like you probably got, like, a whisper of, like, tooth in between you and nerve pain. Oh, my God. I can't imagine. I would rather have scarification, like you said. Yeah. I mean, I know people who have scars, like intentional scars that were put there on purpose. I men- I mentioned on a show that I, scarved, I carved Metallica into my leg right here on my lower leg where my sock covers. Mm-hmm. I carved Metallica with a razor blade. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking badass, man. Garage days, man. It's all cover songs. <laughs> uh, I loved it. And um and then I took pen ink from a big pen. Mm-hmm. Like prison. This is how we do it here in my town. And uh I wiped it all into the bloody Metallica and then it like scabbed up. I was like, holy shit, this would be fucking sweet. And then it like grew out and it was gone. It's like I think I need Indian ink, not ballpoint pen ink. Well, that would work. You probably just didn't fuck your skin up enough. Yeah. I'm actually investigating it right now, and I don't see any signs of Metallica anywhere. Yeah, it's you probably didn't, you didn't cut deep enough or wide enough, probably. Yeah. yeah. These people are cutting into the layers, eh? Oh, yeah. Nice and wide, too. <laughs> Wait till you do the Google image search for this episode. It's nowhere near you at seven thirty one territory, but some of it'll get you. I watched a couple procedures on the National Geographic program Taboo. Yeah, that's a good resource for this. Um, if you're looking for supplementals after we're done here, I thought Taboo was just a category on like Pornhub. <clears throat> it's also a fun board game. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, Pornhub paid me to say that. I'm gonna be freaking straight up honest with you they said look you cut our name into any one of your episodes 50 bucks in your pocket you want to tell your co-host it's up to you so i'm being honest with you i got 25 bucks coming your way nice i should have never said that i was just trying to be funny (laughs) i'm trying to come clean with you and the audience yeah i'll accept it because i feel sufficiently bribed now the reason for the development of scarification culturally has several proposed hypotheses. Um, some anthropologists think that scarification seen mainly in West and Central Africa exists as a rite of passage. Uh, for others, it's a hardening or trauma procedure. It makes the people who undergo it stronger. Like it makes them more resilient to pain once it's over. I think this goes back to our tattooing episode too, like the Mari, like the way they ding ding ding, they would hammer it in with mm-hmm. like a wooden peg. Yeah, it's like it's, it's the similar. pain is part of yeah the pain. You see a big tattoo on his back, you think it's scarification too, you know. Yeah, and I'm, if I'm it. being honest, I think that one of the large reasons that I got a tattoo was just to do it, like just to have one, like just to be like, okay, I can do that. I don't have one. I want to get one, though, but I feel like if I get one, it'd be like, he's getting old. Look at this guy. He's getting tattoos. Nah, he's nobody turning. gives a shit. Look, he's turning 35. He's going to go on 36. He wants to give himself a tattoo. He's in the prime of his life. Look at him. Just kidding. You got to start somewhere, you know? Other hypotheses suggest that this is a non-adaptive, sexually selective characteristic. Meaning somewhere along the line, having scars became very attractive amongst the group. Also, the neck stretching, the longer the neck was like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice similar, neck. similar thing. More themes on body modifications, why we've done it throughout history. Guys I, like, see the butt on her. 
Oh shit! Yeah, I seen that, but I'm more interested in that motherfucking scar pattern, kid. Come on now, check out the scar patterns on her shoulders, son. Yeah, now scar patterns are designed as beautification procedures. Visually impaired people enjoy them even more. They're like, I can read your back. Braille. Um, right. They do say that it, it's it's enhanced tactile pleasure as well as visual pleasure. Like getting it touched? No, touching them hmm. is more beautiful than touching unadorned skin is, is the apparent, uh, apparent situation. I got to tell you, when I was the, the Google image search features some not so pleasant images of the process occurring, but a lot of these women with scars on their face are absolutely beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're like intricate patterns, like concentric rings of dots and stuff like that. They look incredible. Hmm. I, one of the reasons that scarification may have developed here as opposed to, I mean, say, it didn't really take hold in Europe, really. Yeah. Ink shows up really good on white skin. Char- scars show up better on black skin than tattoos do, generally speaking. The pigment's a different color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially when you're talking about people indigenous to Central Africa. Yeah. I mean, that's some, that they have very dark skin, tattoo ink. I mean, what are you going to do? Scars, that's probably why scarification is more prominent here and tattooing is more prominent with, you know, white and Asian people. Ink shows up real easily on their skin. Yeah. So this is probably very similar to tattooing and it's, you know, reasoning and everything. I mean, aside from being an aesthetic, like beauty based procedure, the scars can also be an identifier. I think like like a family name. Yeah, like family information, tribal allegiance. Yeah, uh, like your clan information and your own personal like history. I mean, for a lot of these tribes, I mean, we're speaking specifically about, I mean, Central and West Africa here. It's almost like walking around with your driver's license tattooed on your face and your autobiography. Hmm. Yeah, it's like your identity combined with your story of your life in in some ways. Um again, I'm going to bring up another past episode, but that was another that was another thing that went along with the deformed skulls. Because mm-hmm. people knew that oh He's cool because he has this way of life. Yeah, he's one of the cool long head dudes. Yeah. Yeah. Says he's from France. He keeps saying he's from France. He needs to eat mass quantities. Yeah. yeah. A, they had a real, they talked like a monotone almost, mm-hmm. their tribal tongue. Yeah. Uh, this also indicates your social status. So the type of scarring you have, uh, indicates you know what kind of what your role in the society is we can extrapolate from this that the roles that you have in society you once you have one it's yours forever (laughs) yeah like once you're like let's say like you like become a a lady like what 13 you get like scar on one eye that means you're a single available lady when you get married they like scar the next one like that means partnered up forever when I say 13, I'm going by like, that's how it was back then and is today. Sometimes. Yeah. You're a lady now. You're getting married. You're 13. Now get out there. Mm-hmm. He's a sultan for crying out loud. Yeah, women, and because of the beautification aspect of the ritual, tend to accentuate uh, places where women display prominent secondary sexual characteristics, like their breasts. Um, their faces, their stomachs, their thighs. Men, and for similar reasons, also portray scarring where they have their secondary sexual characteristics, like their faces, their arms, and shoulders. And for women, scarring on the abdomen or stomach can be seen as indicating their ability to withstand the pain of childbirth. Check it out. These hips, <laughs> child rearing hips, no problem. Done it already. You look at these scars. You can tell I didn't even flinch. Shit. 
I had my last baby when I was swimming. No problem. Continued swimming. Okay. Shit, I can have kids. Can I have kids? He's asking. Read my stomach. <laughs> Here, the three dots. You mean this? <laughs> That's not the only reasoning behind scarification, though. Also, and if you'll remember this from the tattooing episode, sometimes scars were applied medicinally. And in these cases, much like in the tattoos, you would find these scars above the affected area, the area that they were trying to heal. Hmm. Now, talk about double wham. I don't like going to the doctor very much now, but if this was like... Hey, my like hips been bugging me a little bit, and they're like, "All right, let me just cut uh, cut you up for a little while in a design that ought to help." I'd be like, "God damn, this sucks." <laughs> Need to call my HMO. Oh, they probably won't even cover scarification processes, though. Um, are you, you probably? I don't know if you if you remember this, but like like people that are like like my, my parents' age when they got like um baby boomers polio vaccination. They also had this like round scar on their shoulder. Have you ever seen that? No. So like if you look at pictures of like 70s NBA players, how they're all in tank tops, Mm -hmm. like especially the black guys, you'll see their scar is like darker because their pigment's a little bit darker than their like skin tone. Huh. Yeah. And like white guys too. But like for sure, like I want to say like Magic, Kareem maybe, they'll have like a little dark thing on their shoulder and it was like they got it from getting that vaccination. Like you all lined up. It's a weird thing. I remember, like, had it's like, like polio, that experience. Smallpox, polio, something like that. Polio, I think, but like probably polio. Yeah, yeah. that's nuts. I have to look into that. Yeah, I mean, most of the evidence for scarification that we have is coming to us from West Africa and the Congo River Basin. Mm. So, I mean, that's what mostly we're gonna be, we've talked about and the reasoning behind it. But this is some old shit. This goes way back, just like lots of our other body modifications. Uh, the earliest evidence of scarification of human skin for ornament, ornamentational purposes was actually found in Jordan, hmm. dating to eight thousand BC. That's my go-to country when it's a Middle Eastern question. Like, this country is a port city and blah, blah, blah. I'm always like, what is Jordan? It's like, what is Saudi Arabia? Mm. Damn it. <laughs> I always try to act like I know my shit. Or Qatar. Qatar is another one. If you say, what is Qatar? And the answer is, what is Qatar? And you guessed, you just sound like a freaking international know-it-all. Mm-hmm. It's no problem. Shit. I just learned about Turkmenistan the other day. Is it an Asian nation? It's between Kazakhstan. It also borders uh, it's, Afghanistan. It's on the Caspian Sea. I think that's the largest inland body of water in the world. The language they speak is Turkmen. Turkmenistan literally means the place of the Turkmen. Yeah, but I hadn't t- learned too much about Turkmenistan before that. So what are you going to do? I know. And now hey, I know some shit. I just want to say welcome to our Turk Turkmen listeners who found us through hashtag Turkmenistan. <laughs> Viva Turkmenistan. What's up, Turkmenistan? GDP growing. We love to see that over here. Caspian Sea Lake House. Oh. Fishing. That Turkmen lake water. Fresh, crisp, clean water. The Caspian. You know, the other places that scarification has been practiced are as d- disparate as Polynesia, all of the Americas, boom, north, south, central, you name it, scarification happening all over the place. Yep. And the Aboriginal Australians. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to get into the part of it that's sort of fucked up. We're going to talk about how these scars get made. So everyone should grab like what a razor blade or like a pin, a sharpened uh, tin can lid, uh, a broken bl- glass bottle. Oh piece of yeah, glass. yep, a shell. So any type of shell you've ground down on on a whetstone. Yeah. So okay, now you can now press it on your skin. Now as Brad describes, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do not. Yeah, don't ever do this to yourself. We want you to live and donate to our fu- our. Find a professional <laughs> if you'd like to have this done. Yeah. 
So we mentioned it's it's similar to tattooing, but it is much more difficult to refine. I mean, but let me put it this way. There's no portrait scars. You can't be that detailed with it. Just ain't going to fuck around like that. Like the guy that makes those badass pancakes. Like yeah, you can't do here. that. You can't like scar this one like, uh, and then like eight months later scar the rest. Yeah, only like Don't modern like techniques of doing this can produce something as sophisticated as shading. So we're talking simple designs. Because also, it's very difficult to predict how you're going to heal from a wound. Are we going to talk about branding? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Sorry, my bad. So there's basically three methods of scarring a person for decoration with lots of fun subgenres. The three big ones are branding. That was, ow, ow, it's hot. <laughs> cutting and abrasion. Oh, 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 that's Tom and Jerry. He just got branded, stepped on a hot poker. Now, in case you weren't a cartoon watcher, branding involves taking an object, heating it to an extremely high heat. A metal object. Not necessarily. We're talking bone? Not necessarily. Ceramic? Could be. Porcelain? Could be. Could be electric wire as well. Well, we'll get there. So, yeah, the heat damages the skin, and that's the wound that heals into the desired scar. I don't know how many of you out there have been burnt to any degree, but to be like, yeah, voluntarily burn me is something that I'm never <laughs> going to fucking say in my life. Did you hang out with burnouts in high school uh, that had lighters? Did they ever let a lighter just like burn, get red hot, and go, like get a smiley face on your arm? You know the little grippy little things that you do your with your thumb? The little grip. Yes. Well, that part is the eyes, the two parts of the thing. And then the metal, this shape that the flame comes out mm -hmm. is the mouth. And you get a burn of a smiley face. Burnout shit, man. I this tried to be like a hard ass and put a cigarette out on my arm once. Keyword, once. Didn't fucking happen again. I can tell you that much. That sucked. The trick is pretending that it doesn't hurt. I probably managed that, but af afterwards, when it fucking like hurt throbbing my arm for like three days, I've learned my lesson. Yeah. And God forbid anything touch it. I'll have fun in the shower when you're burnt. I got another burnt like body mut mutilation. I think I might have mentioned this on the show, but... Uh, this one kid stuck a metal thumbtack in a pencil eraser and rubbed it on the school desk, the wooden smooth desk, as much as he could. It got super hot and he freaking put it on my forearm and it like took a layer of skin off with it. Like, what the f I literally had a round scar. I probably still do, but it's not as detailed. But yeah, high school, this happened. Son of a bitch. Did I tell the he story? He lived. Uh he still is alive. But you didn't he, kill him for that? He is in a wheelchair. He cannot walk, never will. Uh, he went out a window. He jumped out a window in fear of me. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> Did I tell the uh, the story about the me pressing buttons in my dad's truck when I was a little kid on this show? I can't remember. Is it, it a lighter? Yeah. I don't think so. So my, we were going to the library. I remember my dad had a Ford Ranger, and he was inside the gas station paying, and I was dicking around in the car, and my dad didn't smoke. And I was like, what the fuck is this button? The diagram of like the lit, lit cigar. I couldn't decipher whatever the hell that was supposed to be. Yeah. I pushed it in. Nothing seemed to happen. But oh. it popped out and the button came off. And I was like, oh, did I fucking break it? Take the thing off and I'm looking at it. And it. I don't sense any heat coming off of it. But I'm like, it's bright. And I thought it was like a secondary button, I think. Like, because it was lit up. I was like, oh, that must be another button. Put my whole thing, index finger right on it. I burned the shit out of it. It sucked so hard. My God. I have I I have so many burn stories. But um I used to work I in feel Red your Lobster. Pain. I burned the hell out of myself on a daily basis. Yeah. Yep. I'm not gonna tell all of them. I wanna learn more about this topic. <laughs> so strike branding is the 
process you'd probably be most familiar with. Um, it's done on human beings is why it's called strike branding. It's the same as livestock branding. Uh, you take a, a, a shaped piece of metal, heat it up, and then press it onto a person's skin. Bingo, bango. Real simple. Uh, this method was most commonly used historically to indicate the victim, in this case victim, was property as a slave or a convict. Django like, this had... This guy steals stuff. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Django had a R on his cheek or something for like runaway. Yeah. 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 That's This type of branding historically is, is not the beautiful type. But then he later got it changed to like real motherfucker like if he got only his, yeah he, he certainly it. was a real motherfucker uh in the song in that movie it's like and when he shot he never missed oh mm-hmm. and uh he doesn't miss in the movie when he's practicing on the bottles he's like clink 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 click <laughs> and i love he, that movie, when he tries though. like to snipe the guy he gets him like <laughs> what first shot he does miss in the shootout in the end though when it's like jingle you motherfucker like that kind of shit he misses in that scene but through the whole movie dude never missed it's a great Django. movie now, cautery branding is rarer but it's it solves that precision problem a little bit that we have with scarification in general because it's done with a, an extremely narrow device like in modern times this method is done with I think like a heat gun with a really narrow point and they then you can draw on the skin burning it as you go a hot poker yeah you you just pick up an iron poker out of the fire and throw it yeah Yeah, wrap a cloth around there you're gonna burn your watch yourself now and it's got to be hot enough. This is the, the thing that defines this particular subgenre of branding. This isn't surface level. This is deep because you're cauterizing what would otherwise be bleeding flesh. So it's a combination cut burn deal. Disfigurement. Deep. That's the key word for this one. It's going deep. They were going deep way before dinner at all ever was cauterizing going deep treason wow. treason never got that treason just got like broken on the wheel <laughs> like i ain't yeah. heating up no poker it's the hottest day of the summer we're just putting them on a wheel fuck it you can get lots of heated pokers if you're talking about like medieval europe <laughs> yeah. that's where you get hot pokers coming into the mix we got another modern method of branding that's because oh you, people are getting the shit today. It's still happening. All of this, yeah. Is this the part about? Pretty about- sure every body modification we've ever mentioned. I bet you there's somebody stretching out some baby's head somewhere right now. <laughs> Is this the part where you talk about rug burns? No. Okay. Not Indian burns either. Are we cutting that out? <laughs> Indian burns. <laughs> Mercy! <laughs> Look, it's a fucking uncle! 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 <laughs> Let me go! And we are never going to discuss noogies on this program. Who are you, mister? <laughs> <laughs> Let me go! A nice van you have, though. Run out of the confessional booth. Get me out of here! <laughs> Electrosurgical branding. Involves using high doses of electricity applied directly to skin to damage it. Nice. Yeah, it's basically taking an arc welder to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. This it, might, that'll do the trick. This might hurt like hell a little. <laughs> this is probably the most precise method of this process, though. Um, you can control the depth and the width of the burn in this case. Also... If you need to jack it up, you could defibrillate somebody, I guess. <laughs> In yeah. the event of an emergency. What does a taser do? Zap your whole circuit, your whole system? Like, <laughs> shocks your whole system? Yeah, well, I think the taser, it's the purpose burning. is to feed, like seize up your muscles. Yeah. Like you can't do anything. Hmm. Seems like if I was a like in law enforcement or something i would have a taser that way like if a guy if i had a hard time controlling him like a lot of times like instead like the cop will just like shoot the guy dead yeah like if i had a taser 
I could, you're saying it will tense up their muscles. You could definitely like get control of a person after that, right? Mm-hmm. If they can't, like you just grab their arms and yeah, especially when it's like ten them. on one. Yeah, like you think they should definitely look into tasers. There is another method of branding, but this one's got a saucy little twist to it. This is cold branding. Same process as strike branding, except it involves the strike being super cooled instead of heated. Like dry ice? Yeah. Think maybe like a liquid nitrogen bath. Mm. Yeah. So it doesn't cause keloiding. That's man shit. Yeah, keloiding is where the scar like gets all big and huge, which in some cases is desirable when this process is applied. In general, keloiding is undesired. People generally don't want scars. I have quite a few myself. I was a clumsy and, I dare say, adventurous youngster. Hmm. But usually you don't want the scars to be big and weird. The cool thing about it, though, is you're not going to get any keloiding, but wherever you apply the brand, the hair there will come back, but it will come back white forever. That's kind of neat. I'm tempted to like shave my head, like, buzz my head down, torch it, and get like some cool cold branding like designs so that only white hair would grow in like a design on the side of my head. That'd it's freaking cheetah, bro. That'd be fucking cool as hell. Hell yeah. I'm never going to do that, but I think it would be cool. Get like Tasmanian devil in there. I heard that some um, countries. There will be like corporate sponsors where people will do that. They'll shave like ice. They call it ice shaving. Ice but shaving. Like one guy got like a, a Mercedes symbol in his head. Nice. Yeah. I used to have when my mom used to cut my hair when I was like uh, like nine, ten years old. I would never let her stop until his, she had shaved the lines in. Steps. Like, yeah. At, like after I had seen House Party. Yeah. Like for uh, like for like years, I'd be like, uh, 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 like you think you're done cutting my hair, flatten that top out, and boom, I want those lines in the side of my head. No, yeah. Did you have mullet too? I never had a mullet. No. Nor a rat. Were you tail. you were a hockey player? Yeah. Yeah, I get it now. You freaking. Well, I should have had a, a mullet. It's yeah. called hockey hair. They also had that freaking. Mm. Freaking! I knew you were a jock. Hockey players have the sickest flow. They have the best <laughs> hair out of any professional sports. Yamir Yager. Yeah, that was one of the best mullets that has ever graced this earth. Yeah. Ingve Malmsteen from the Bruins. Hell yeah, some long hair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, playing the anthem last fourteen minutes. So that's it for branding, though. That's everything in the branding family. Now we'll move on to the biggie, cutting. Several techniques in the cutting family. And we're talking about using an extremely sharp implement. When it's done today, it's done with a scalpel. That's what I use. We talked about a little bit earlier. You could use clamshell, glass, you name it. Anything that's super sharp, rocks you could use, wood for cutting purposes. It's all on the table. Bird's beak. Yeah, you catch one. Sure, you can get them at the pet store. A bird, a live bird, you use its beak. Mm-hmm. I mean, damn! And it's basically you cut lines into the skin. Boom! There's a design on there. That's that's the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, there's several ways to zazz this up, though. I mean, number one, you illustrated a major technique in this family earlier, and you didn't even realize it. Rubbing ink into it. The scars will pick up the color. Ash, did they do that too? Yes. They did in their tattoo yep. episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'll, they might rub ash in it. Ashes are actually part of a technique in cutting scarification called packing. In the West, they use ashes. When this is done in Africa, it's used uh, some inert substance like clay. So after you have the wound opened up, you'll pack clay into it or cigar ash. And what this does is it results in like a very keloided scar, like very raised, picks up the color. It's big and dark. This this is like going hard on scarification. This is like the 
the like fucking speed metal of scar scarification. It's like the hardest shit. These people, I heard that one time there was a person that had like the clay scarification. Mm -hmm. They were at the airport and they ran into someone with henna. And they're like, oh, your henna, like your scarification is so insanely beautiful and ornate. And they're like, Saint, this is henna. Like, what? And they're like, yeah, this is washes off. And they're like, I sat under the freaking knife. Mud in my sores for this. And this washes off. I feel so tricked. That my does culture. seem that does seem like cheating like, comparatively. Yeah, they should just break out henna everywhere instead of saving these people a freaking bloodshed. Now this next method might sound a little familiar. Skin removal. We're talking small scale here. We're talking about patches like maybe like a centimeter wide. Centimeter, two centimeters tops. We're not talking about whole body skin removal is here obviously yeah so gross visually yeah now how they do this is you take something like a scalpel right right and you'll cut a line then a, you know a centimeter away you'll cut another line and then you'll cut crosses to hatch out yeah that's how you the wood carve the skin yeah that's a good way to wood carve too with this methodology also, the hatching is where shading comes into play on scars. So gross, man. I know. Can you imagine? When be we, like, yeah, just cut my whole shit up. When we talk about slicing and exposing flesh, like on Ling Chi, it's just so gross, man. It's one of our worst things. Like, worse than my pricking. Yeah, it's like maybe, maybe I could uh, somehow consider this if it was like, all right, I'll have the whole next like week to never have to put a shirt on i'll be able to just lay out with like fucking a and d ointment kate culvert all over myself watching tv and like being fed while i healed up only then could i ever dream of undertaking something like this no matter how cool it might eventually look three weeks on your stomach i could live with that but if it was like no it's fucking july you got to get up and sweat and like go to work but fuck that i couldn't tolerate that for a second man this would be painful Whew. the last type of uh, scarification we've got is abrasion this involves rubbing the skin off rather than cutting it to create enough damage to make dope looking scars this is a tough one. This seems worse than anything else to me. Maybe not branding because you got the smell component going with it. That would be really gross. Like smell yourself burning for a while. That would be. I, I, that would bug, bug me. I think. I, I think like a Dremel tool, like the grinder bit. Ooh. <laughs> You're saying like the <laughs> rubbing. A uh, sandpaper yeah, can sand be used. Belt, belt yeah. sander. Yeah. Yeah, that can be done intentionally. Yeah, yeah. That's awful. <laughs> yep. Now, the last aspect of this is sometimes the scars can be kept from healing intentionally to make them bigger and, in fact, gnarlier scars. This can be physically keeping the wound open, like, I guess, the opposite of stitching. Yeah. Uh. This can be putting irritating shit in it to keep it from healing, like sand. Yeah. I like gritty stuff, uh, nasty shit, chemical irritants to keep the wound like open. Comet. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, for the love of God, never do that. Um, I mean, this would result in gnarlier scars, but also is a good way to point out the key risk of this particular body modification and that is infection hell yeah especially in the cases where you're intentionally irritating a wound to keep it from healing you're it's like begging for infection yeah keep picking at it yeah the With infection in some cases i wouldn't even be surprised if people were like oh sweet it got infected now the scar is going to be even gnarlier I don't know, man. That seems like a bad idea to me. But that's it. That's scarification. That's the process. That who, who does it? Why? 
So now we're going to get into tooth sharpening. This has got some little deep action in here at the end. Down to the nerve. That deep. Oh, yeah. Good fun. Nice wordplay. I had, I bought that one off of a professional podcast service. <laughs> ghost right? We got ghost writers like or Drake or something. There's, there's services out there that will enhance your podcast performance. And uh, you just tell them topics, things like that, scenarios, and they'll shoot like 10 different, you know. Riffs at you? Yeah, I just read this list off that I pay. You know, it's like seven bucks. No big deal. Yeah, it's for the show. Tooth sharpening, widely practiced around the world. And it's a lot simpler than scarification. Take a file, make the teeth pointy. Yep. You're done. Grab a file. If you have a file at home, grab it. Hell yeah. And dry it in the mirror. Spit the chips out. The tooth chips don't swallow them. Yeah, otherwise they might chip, like, cut you up. Yikes. It's coarse. And there's evidence of this shit going down in the Remojadas culture in Mexico around 100 BCE. There, the practice seemed to be very widely accepted. Like, everybody was doing it. Yeah. In Bali, everybody got their teeth filed down. Uh, because people thought that the teeth represented anger, jealousy, and other negative emotions. So everybody gets all of their teeth shortened. They don't like long teeth in, in Bali. But at puberty, as a rite of passage, then you get your front one sharpened. So it's like seems like kind of a mixed message to me. They're like, jealousy and anger are bad. Those are somehow represented by teeth, so we're going to file them bad boys down. But by the, we're going to make your front teeth, though, however, when you grow up a little bit, look terrifying. <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that weird? Ugh, this is a bad topic. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Ling Chi and teeth grinding. Whew. Uh, for spiritual or religious re- reasons, we actually see this in Aboriginal tribes of Australia the people of Vietnam, the people of Sudan, all at some point in history practice tooth sharpening. Yeah. I've seen images of teeth filed straight across, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's less common. The only... uh, I only read about that occurring in Bali. Mm. Yeah. Now, the Mayans, they sharpen their teeth, too. But for them, it was mainly to delineate the upper class from the normies. Psychopaths from the freaking peasants. Yeah. Um, their, their particular variation also included designs carved into the tooth. That must have been a fucking grueling procedure. Duh. <laughs> so, oh, it's gross. We can talk about the Wapare people of sub-Saharan Africa. They would sharpen their teeth to imitate sharks. So Mm -hmm. it looked like they had shark teeth. Yeah. Fucking terrifying, man. They would also uh, pull a few teeth at puberty. You got too many teeth. Yeah. For some reason, a couple got to go. Got to spread these teeth out. They're not going to be able to spread out with all these teeth in here. got to save these for later. Ancient China, also on the tooth sharpening chain. We can talk about the Jalau people. Uh, Jalau women, before their weddings, would have two teeth removed for some reason. Hmm. I mean, the quotation of the reasoning, I, I read it. No reasoning. There was a reasoning offered, but it didn't make any sense to me. Um, what it said was is they have two teeth removed in order to prevent harm from coming to the husband's family. I don't know where that logical leap comes from, but there's missing steps in between that I would need for this philosophy to make any sense to me. Yeah, it's like a teeth contest involved. I have no idea. How many teeth you got? Too many. Oh, you you're got, out. Now the husband's family's harmed Come somehow. In here. Come in here with all those teeth. Yeah, that that was the reason that was offered to me in in my research. 
uh, in the Utopo culture in the central Congo, men only file their top teeth on the maxillary arch. Hmm. Women, top and bottom, both maxillary and mandibulary arches. That's odd. Mm hmm. There's other ways of showing your gender. Shit. Just wear a freaking two piece bathing suit. Yeah. Christ. Well, you got to have different tooth sharpening policies. I, I say just, it's like AL and NL baseball. Just pick a goddamn rule set and play the same way. Make right? the pitchers bat like everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Let the men bat if they're men. Yeah, could so-called you so-called men? Could you imagine that in any other sport? What what if the AFC and the NFC were completely different? In the NFC, they're like, we play with uh, 13 guys on each team now. I was just trying to compare it to NBA. Like, we got six against five over here in the West. <laughs> two centers. We got those, like, ultimate Frisbee rules where you can only take two steps after you get the ball no matter what. Then you got to pass it. We got four pointers over here. <laughs> yeah. It would be insane if half yeah. of the NBA played like that. In the, I'm sorry. That was a really bad digression. But Where that seems we? ridiculous. What we, what's this episode about? Too sharp. Oh, that's right. Forget we're talking about Western Conference NBA basketball. Now, small forward for the Utah Jazz, Yersinia Pestis, has yeah. sharpened teeth. Okay. A little known fact. That's right. And his left canine is engraved in a Aztec symbol. Yeah, totally. Mayan, maybe. Something like that. Rewind the tape. It's still popping, though. We can say that. Tooth sharpening is alive and well in the world today. The Mentawe people in Indonesia still practice it for both spiritual and aesthetic reasons. Hmm. Now, to cap this show off, <laughs> the last bit. I'm not ready. I got so much more to say. Let me hear it. Let's <laughs> have kidding. it. I'm just kidding. We've got an extended... Going deep. Dinner in hell. Going deep. We're talking about the Zappo Zaps. Oh my God! One of the most highest quality lighters ever to be made. Not Zippo these people, Zips. These people make a quality product. No, they do not. Their Lifetime. products are evil, and Life you will hear about it. Lifetime guarantee. You just send it to them. They fix it up. Send it back. Well, the Zappo Zaps are not a company that fix your electronics. They are a group of... Mosquito uh, killer lamps for campers and <laughs> outdoors decks. The mosquitoes touch it and they zap to death. Quality product from quality people. Well, no. These are a group of rebels from the Songye people in the Congo. Uh, the time frame we're talking about here is the time frame of the Congo Free State, 1880s. After their <laughs> leaving... What that look for? <laughs> I'm making sure you're prepared for this. Uh, after their leader, whose name was... Uh, I'm trying my best here. King Un Leopold? The f no, no, no. Junior? Their leader was Nsapu Nsapu. Hmm. And they changed that to Zappo Zaps, which they called this group of about 3,000 people. That's what they called them. By they, I mean the Congo Free State, because they were forced to retreat after their rebellion failed, going westward, and they ran into Paul Le Marinel, the commander of the Congo Free State. Uh, we're going to get into it right here. The Zappo Zaps were not only cannibals, but they took cannibalism to the next level. Most cannibals throughout history, it's confined to a ritual purpose and ceremony. Like it's a special occasional thing that they do. Uh, this group of people, they just preferred human flesh to any other animal flesh. Mm. So human meat was a delicacy to the Zappo Zap. So they would hunt humans even if there were plenty of other animals to hunt around. So we're talking dangerous folks. Man, if they just came to like America or something, they could really like trim down some of the population. I mean, we're pretty congested as a no, people. No, we're we have plenty of room. Look out in the Dakotas, like last episode, Montana, plenty of fucking room. Oh yeah, just knock these trees down. They're plains. They're wide open. Oh, well, but they considered human meat to be an absolute delicacy, and they didn't waste 
a single bit. They ate everything, including the brain and eyeballs. Interested in cooking methods? Because I know them. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering how to prepare proper BH. Uh, they fry it. They pan fry it, much like you would cook bacon. That's that's the way the Zappo Zaps <laughs> cooked human beings. Rectums? I said BH. What do you think I meant? I don't know. I, I, you fry you fry chitlins, right? Number two. That's close to rectum. That's intestines. That would be fried, yeah. I think you boil chitlins. You boil them, I think. Do you? I don't know. I've never had them. Or maybe you boil them and then fry them, but I think they're boiled in water, like hard-boiled egg. I think that's how you can make... Ch- chitlins is the intestine, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you I think you cook it. Oh, well, one of our listeners school us on chitlins because I think they're fried. Yeah. Ron thinks they're boiled. I, I, but I don't know about human chitlins, so I only know about like pig or Sheep whatever ones. it is. Yeah, I don't know human. Human might be like fried. I don't know. Ask a fucking zappo zap. I mean, they fried them. So right. what are you going to do? Just contact them on Facebook something and ask them if you want to know about human. And that's not in our frigging wheelhouse. <laughs> then before they hooked up with the Congo Free State, uh, they were still cannibals then. It was This was in their culture for a while. Uh, before they hooked up with the Belgians, they were armed with spears, poison arrows or darts, and also battle axes. So, like, I'm imagining a really, really scary group of people right now. Yeah. Wearing human skulls as decoration. Jaws. Jaw ball bones. Now, after they get employed as mercenaries by the Belgians in the Congo Free State, they have guns. Oh, shit. Cannibal with the gun. Eat for a day. Ooh. <laughs> yep. Give a cannibal a gun, he'll eat. For, give a cannibal a spear, he'll eat for a day. Give a cannibal a gun, he'll frig take over a countryside. Now, for meat wasn't the only reason they were interesting in acquiring human beings. They were also, even before hooking up with the Belgian slave raiders, uh, they would regularly meet up with Arab slave traders from the east and trade them villagers that they had captured in raids in exchange for some guns and ammunition and other manufactured goods, like I mean, from what I know about them now, I would imagine they need a lot of co- cast iron pots. <laughs> Big ones. Yeah. A lot of carrots. A lot of <laughs> onions for the soup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, they pan fried all this. Oh. You don't waste yeah. the good meat in a soup. They sometimes probably make want, like a, yeah. Sometimes you want a nice tourist stew. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Some freaking Swede comes around on holiday. You're going to make stew. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus. You could fry anything. You could fry a freaking warthog. You could fry a freaking another tribesman from a local con- enemy tribe. Mm-hmm. It's all going to taste the same when it's fried. You're going to boil an out-of-towner. <laughs> now, now, let me ask you this. When this group of people, the Zappo Zaps, hooks up with the Belgians who were in charge of administering the Congo Free State, do you think it brought out the best in them or the worst in them? No one man can have all that power. Leopold II could. God, yeah. So I imagine you'd you'd guess that the Zappo Zaps, they weren't worse off. Or better, were they better off or worse off after they met up with the Belgians? False. <laughs> I, I don't understand, but I can tell you this. After they hooked up, they really let rip with the fucking evil shit. They were yeah. way worse, That's not better. Yeah. I imagine so. I mean, we're talking about imagine 500 warriors all armed with guns. They summon the local chiefs. They demand uh, as payment for receiving nothing in return. Buckets of hands. Yeah. The tribute they demand uh, is 60 slaves, herds, plural, of goats. No. Baskets of food and 2,500 balls of rubber. We remember how tough the R word is. 
Mm. Yeah. The, the obviously this payment is ridiculous and basically impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so when they were like fuck you, we can't do that. Obviously, dumbass. Uh they just shut the doors and massacred all of the chiefs of the local tribes. That's insane. That's dinner in hell right there. Yeah, that's atrocious. That's dinner in hell, atrocious histories, atrocious underbelly of hell, whether it's dinner time or not. It's dinner time somewhere. Yeah, it's the, dinner time in hell. The 500 Zappo Zaps then did what Zappo Zaps are prone to do. Had a barbecue. Yeah. Had a cook-off. They had a barbecue, which involved the complete eradication of even 14 villages gone completely destroyed wiped off the face of the earth forever how many did you did you say how many total 14 thousand villages oh 14 villages we know we know half of the population of this country died in like the 20 years that the congo free state was involved about 10 million people one of the demands was 60 slaves and 25 balls of rubber it's like all right man we only have like 67 people here so if we give you 60 slaves, that means seven of us have to go freaking get your 25 balls of rubber that 67 of us would have a hard time doing. Yeah. It's Change bullshit. your policies. It's lie. It's like it's, it's just a, it's, it's just a bound to fail. It's yeah. Da- yeah. It's, it's untenable. It's unsustainable. It's evil. I mean, the people who didn't die in all the villages that were destroyed I mean, a lot of them died later because all they could do was flee out into the wilderness during the rainy season. No prepared. No supplies. So, I mean, this is just a complete, basically, wipeout of a small region of people. All gone. Hmm. Everything destroyed. Every building. Every settlement. All gone. Most of the people all dead. You came here for body modification. You learned about Congo Free State. Yeah. And the hell in the jungle. That's the most fucked up thing that the Zappo Zaps did. And you may be asking right now, what happened to them? What happened to the Zappo Zaps? Yeah. Well, uh, they're still around. They're, yeah. they're popping around the, the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo. Uh, evidently, they're not so much cannibals anymore, though. Mm, yeah. One of them owns a store in my neighborhood. Like, come on in. We got beer here. We have tobacco products. He's like a cool guy. Zappo, Zappo Zap store. I'm going to go up to the Zappo Zap store. It's Zappo Zap. I only go shop American, asshole. <laughs> they, are, they are, however, known as the most skilled craftsmen. Among the Songye people, you should see their their skull woodwork with the skull work. Well, it's a <laughs> lot of um, metal decoration on wood statuary, so I don't hmm. doubt that you might find some skull work. That's it. That's the story of the Zappo Zaps, the extended dinner in hell, going deep on this body mods episode. What are Zappo Zaps? Correct. You have control Ooh. of the board. I Just don't know learn. if that'll ever find its way onto Jeopardy, but it's, if it does, you're prepped. The the writers of Jeopardy listen to us because every time a show comes out, like all of a sudden, a few days later, mm-hmm. boom, our show's referenced. Yeah. Send us a clip if you're watching, record it on your phone, and tweet it at us. If it's like a Nero or something that you heard on our show, always send that to us. Hashtag Dinner in Hell. Yeah, we'll at retweet dinner in hell. it. You, you can have access to our vast array of followers. Hashtag Dinner's or history's atrocious el- uh, uh, underbelly with no apostrophe. I, I always try to do that one. Try yeah. to get that out there. That's us, baby. That's at Dinner shit. and Hell Pod at Twitter. That's where you can get at us all the time. Fucking, we're on Facebook. We're on SoundCloud. We're on YouTube. We're on Stitcher. We're on something that gets referred to our podcast called Life Water Ministries. What's up? We're glad you're out there. We're on weird bootleg Russian podcast sites because I allow embedding of the YouTube videos. We're everywhere. Google it. Our management does. 
Can you believe this fucking band? They are oh, on fire. This audience and band combined gives me a rush every freaking week. Every time. It is unbelievable. Your freaking voice gives me a rush. Thanks. Yours too. I love being here with Ron Maiden. Thank you for being a great co-host. And every time I slide down the fireman pole into the uh, studio recording area, I get a rush. Oh, also, I did a guest spot on an episode of our lovely sisterly podcast, Video Store Rewind. They talk about all the nostalgic hits from like your fucking childhood if you're our age. We're talking 80s, we're talking 90s. I talked about the movie Airborne, about rollerblading. It was fun. Go check it out. Check out all their shit. Those guys are fun. We love them. Thank you. Thank and you. have a fantastic evening. That, just got to tell you, there's no incense going and it's bothering me. I'll get it Can back. someone light some incense, please? Yeah, this better not go on the outtakes.